my traumatized babies and mentally ill Barbies. Now, usually for these collective general messages, I don't do them in this space. However, for at least the first part of what I need to bring through, the most intense part of this energy has been coming in over the last couple of days and I would like it out of my personal space. I'm going to bring the hardest part of this in first and then we're going to go into the broader channeled messages for this collective. I will have time stamped below when I get into those broader messages because this first part, this energy makes me feel very unsafe as a matter of fact, just to give you a little preview of what we're getting into. Like I already don't feel well. This part of the message is for likely a singular person. So if you start listening to this and it is not you, just go to the timestamp below to get to the broader messages because those are going to be for larger percentages of people and there are a few different scenarios going on here. You can listen to that and then decide if ultimately that this is a collective in which you fit and where you might benefit from hearing some more specific tarot-based messages. What I have here is someone's piece of shit father. And I know that's very judgmental language, but I am calling it like it is. This person is abusive. They were abusive, they are abusive. And so if you know that you did not have that type of relationship with your father, this is not for you. The only reason I am bringing through this energy is because they had a very specific statement that I do think is true that you need to hear, but I will not be bringing through any more of this energy than is absolutely necessary because if you were perhaps wondering if death changed this person, it did not. If you met this person's energy now, they would treat you the exact same way. Unfortunately, they treated you while they were alive. And they likely never told you you were sorry. They never will tell you they're sorry. Nothing you do will ever be good enough for this person. And what I would like you to know, if you don't already know yourself, is that has nothing to do with you. Because the energy that I get from you is you are on the whole, a very well-balanced, very successful person and a wonderful father yourself. Everyone has flaws, but what I sense from you is that whatever this person did, which we'll get into that, the successes that you've had, which have been likely phenomenal, have been in spite of what this person tried to do to you. This person is likely either an immigrant themselves or they are the son of immigrants. They speak with some kind of heavy accent it sounds to me like Eastern European, but I'm not sure. All I know is that when I tried to get a name, it sounded like a language I didn't understand. I don't know that English is their first language. The realm of age that we're talking about. If you're not a boomer, you're Gen X, somewhere in between there. Like this is very, very old school energy. It's very, very formal and it's very dictatorial. Also, what is going on here is that there was significant religious abuse happening here. You grew up in an atmosphere. It was some flavor of Christianity, Judaism, or Islam. And those are the only three it would have been. It's not some other faith-based practice. So if you did not experience that, this is also not for you. The abuse that went on in the family, not only was it psychological and emotional, it was also physical. There was domestic violence going on here. It was justified through whatever religion this was. Like I get the sense that this person took out whatever book, if it was the Bible, if it was something else, if it was the Quran, they would point things out in the book, like explaining to you, like this is why I get to do this. And whatever was going on with you, it was also going on with your mother. And I get that while she was likely your safe haven, it was also sort of like there was nothing she could really do or felt she could do, especially for the time. Like there was probably nothing that could have been done about this, especially for the type of community this was. 
This person seems very, very formal to me. They probably would have been very meticulous about their appearance and the state of the house. Even if you were in some sort of poverty when you were younger, I do get that that was the case. There was a very big sense of pride here. Like no one carried themselves like they were in poverty. And that frankly likely would have been a big source of a trigger for this person, like slovenliness was likely something that was not tolerated. And there was likely no slovenliness going on, but it's just like even a perceived, like something is out of order would likely trigger this person very, very badly. Like things needed to be in order. And if it wasn't, or they perceived it wasn't, they would take it out on y'all. And a big thing that I'm getting about this person is that while they would punish you with physical abuse in some sort of way what was also going on here is that they would just sometimes do things to you because in their mind what they were doing was making you a man or toughening you up like they would do something to you physically and if you cried they would like hit you in in the face because you were crying to get you to stop crying and they would in fact do this just to see if they could get you to have an emotional reaction. And the point was for you to just stand there and take it and not have the reaction period. And what I get is you kind of got to that point. You could hold it in and then I get you would likely go to your mom or some sort of maternal figure and have your emotions with that person. Because no matter what this person did to you, they could not kill your heart, essentially. Like you feel to me like you have a very, very big expansive heart and there's nothing this person could have done to destroy that. But this person now looking at you, they just feel very responsible for whatever successes that you have in your life. They think that they are the reason why you're as successful as you are what they did to you. That is not true. Whatever success that you had was in spite of this person. Whatever strength that you found was in reaction to your experience of injustice with this individual. They haven't changed. Usually I am the person who is delivering the, let us look at this with compassion and you know, diplomacy and all of that kind of stuff. That's actually not the message that I will be imparting today because in fact, you have a past if you never for like if you forgive this person like kudos for you but you will experience no energetic consequences for not coming to forgiveness with this individual it would be suggested and i don't actually don't feel this in your energy at all if you had any type of lingering bitterness or resentment or a grudge that would be something to be released because that just affects your health but if you feel any sort of guilt about thinking however you think about this person that you should in fact be the bigger person because that mentality is in fact your Achilles heel. You can just let that go. The message, the one thing that I will tell you directly from this person's mouth is this. How long are you going to fight me, son? I've been gone a long time. And if you can perceive that I am getting emotional about this, please do not perceive that emotion as belonging to this individual because I would like you to know that that statement is being delivered within the energy of this person doing that, like I'm doing this to get you to not react to me. Like that is how they are delivering this. I'm just emotional about it. They are not feeling any of this about that. So what I'm telling you is the statement is true. Their energy is trash, but there is validity to this statement. If you can hear this, because while you have achieved a lot of success and this person in no way destroyed who you are at a core level, you flourished in spite of them. There are certain things that you're doing right now that are in reaction to them that are holding you back from your optimum fulfillment, happiness, and in fact, material wealth. The ways that you are living your life and fighting this person, fighting maybe you think that 
you don't want to become this person due to whatever material success or personal power that you have. Like if you are someone who now has moved from general poverty into wealth, sort of your worst fear is becoming the tyrant this person was. You can just forget that because you're not that person. You're not going to become that person. And you believing this about yourself and condemning yourself for certain things that you're now experiencing in your own wealth is holding you back from greater wealth that you could actually be using to help other people in a real way. And I'm talking about the type of wealth that you could be experiencing where if there are certain policy changes that you would like to see enacted, that would be available to you in the future if you start making these changes in the present or whenever you're seeing this. Because unfortunately, the way this energy has shown back up in your life is not through other men, it's through the women you are choosing to associate with. You have an ex-wife who really hurt you. It is likely that there was infidelity. This was not a short-term marriage, it was long-term. You built something with this person, you likely have two children, if not more. There's at least one son, probably two. Oh, and I was getting like, don't worry about your your children. Like you're, you are, no matter what you do in this scenario, no matter what changes you make, your children, you are going to get to watch them thrive. Like they are going to have their own challenges, but if you are extremely worried about them, you can also drop that. Like despite whatever went on between you both, it was either your influence or the two of you together did a good job for these kids or you're continuing to do that now because you are having to co-parent with this person. However, there need to be stronger boundaries between you and your ex-wife because there is some nasty stuff going on here that you probably know deep down, but you don't wanna admit it to yourself because I get that you have a big problem seeing women in a particular way. You kind of always see women as the good ones maybe, or the ones being victimized by the system. And while yes, systemic oppression against women is real, that does not mean that all women are good and that you should be viewing them that way. I get this is a real problem for you. You are projecting certain things on very particular women who are in fact abusing you. And you're doing this in whatever relationships you are choosing to pursue now post divorce. This is a repeating cycle for you. And until you face whatever went on with you and your ex-wife, because again, what is going on here, more with the ex-wife than with the father. I feel like you've looked at what happened with your father. There's still a little bit more to do there. With your ex-wife, however you are comporting yourself now in your relationships with other women, I get that it's casual-ish, maybe open relationships, things like that. Not only are you picking poor matches there, you are also not a casual person, but whatever your ex-wife did to you wounded you so badly that you just think that like you made the wrong choice for yourself or you think that this way that you're operating with other people now is in your authenticity. It might've been the right choice for you to get to like a certain phase of your own healing, but whatever these choices are, they now need to end because now it's just going to continually cause problems for you. And here's the thing about your ex-wife. She is happy about whatever way you are conducting yourself right now because the way she feels about it is, well, he's not moved on from me. I'm still the head bitch in charge here. It doesn't matter who he's fucking. I'm the one in his head. I'm the one in his heart. And here's the thing she's not entirely wrong. What I would suggest as your attorney is that you maybe cease and desist however you're operating with these other individuals because what you're likely doing in doing this is running from whatever pain your ex-wife caused you. And until you really look at that, you're gonna repeat this cycle in some type of way. And it's the same cycle that is with your father. Odd, but true. And you got a lot of people like this ex-wife, like if you're paying like alimony or whatever, she feels entitled to whatever success you have. Like a lot of people in your life 
really think that if you didn't have them, you wouldn't be what you are today. And like, look, I'm not saying that they didn't contribute a little bit here and there, but please don't believe that. You are where you are predominantly because of you. And you don't owe these people anything besides whatever like court appointed stuff that you need to pay for child support or whatever it is. But if you are doing more than that, you are in fact feeding into your own abuse. I don't know what's up with you relationship wise going forward. There might be more in there in the more general messages because a lot of this for people who aren't dealing with as extreme stuff, this is mainly about the way men who are providers who have assets are being taken advantage of by people who do not need to be in their life. This is about a complete relationship audit and knocking out the parasites or drawing better boundaries with people who you are unfortunately going to be tied to in some way for the rest of your life because your future happiness and whatever visions that you have for yourself ride on this. And there will be certain consequences for a large contingency of these people if they don't clean up these major stressors in their lives because y'all are not young men, y'all are 40 plus, and the stress is going to start making itself known in some very serious health consequences. And then where are your actual dependents going to be? Because I guarantee you the people who don't need to be, you know, cut out or have better boundaries drawn between them and you, they don't care about what your material are providing them. Or I mean, they do, they probably like the lifestyle that they have, but I guarantee you if it came down to a choice between the money and you, they would pick you 100% of the time. They would give up everything they had to keep you well and good in their lives. So for the people who aren't giving you that type of energy, it's time to go. Now I'm going to move in to the more broader messages. Broader collective. I just brought through a lot, so forgive me if I seem a little bit emotional. Collective, you are older men. You are 40 years old or older. You have families. You are currently married or you have been married before. Or if you have never been married, if that is not your lifestyle, you are in charge of something, either your own company or you have a high position at another company. Either way, you have people who you feel responsible for and who are actually dependent on you in some way. And I mean materially dependent. You have material dependents, likely a lot of them, or you perceive there to be a lot of them, but they're actually not all people that you should be materially providing for. But you are the type of men or masks who in general get fulfillment from providing for others. You are that traditional provider man husband, even if you are more progressive in your politics for yourself, even if you're LGBTQIA plus positive for others and you're supportive of that within your own life and lifestyle in general you are pursuing and enjoy traditional gender roles and that's especially if you are in marriages or you have at least one marriage that is over there is this other contingency of you that while you do like that provider thing you are more into either open relationships you're polyamorous or you're ethically non-monogamous. And this is a contingency of you that A, have either never been married or been through a divorce. This also is a contingency of you who have been divorced and after your divorce moved into this type of lifestyle. The biggest issue here, regardless of where you are on this spectrum, but I wanna keep the people who are married, because this is a smaller percentage of people, these people who are still married. This broader perspective of either divorced people who are now in these casual relationships, open relationships, whatever it is, or the people who have not been married, and this is how you've been operating for the entirety of your life. What is going on here is that you are being leached off of materially. There are parasites 
in your social networks and within your love relationships that are depleting you in some kind of way. They're bringing stress into your life. And for a lot of you, what I'm getting is that despite your material wealth, you do not want to be perceived as a shitty wealthy person. And so you might essentially be trying to live like almost a less privileged lifestyle. It's sort of like you're denying your own wealth and privilege. It's like you don't want to be the man. But the thing is, like, that's not going to work. It's like you're, that is your inauthenticity. It's like you are within a particular power dynamic and you trying to deny that power dynamic is getting you into trouble. And also likely the type of boundaries that I'm going to be talking about might repel you a little because for some of you, I get you really like being like spontaneous and free and whatever. Unfortunately, gentlemen, when we are talking about money and if you are in dynamics with people that have less than you, it gets to be a problem when there are not very, very clear, very, very upfront boundaries. What you need to recognize is that understanding your own power and wealth dynamics does not make you a shitty person. It doesn't. It, it, it will actually prevent more problems in the long run should you choose to continue these more casual types of relationships going forward until you either find someone that you want to be with long term or maybe you don't. But some of you, especially these divorced ones here who are now in this particular type of lifestyle, this lifestyle that you have is in reaction to whatever went down with your divorce. You are actually not authentically non-monogamous or poly or in open relationships or whatever that is. That is a manifestation of whatever wounding happened in your divorce. And you are doing this to run from that pain. You are actually... Like, maybe you don't ever want to be husbands again, okay? But for a contingency of y'all, you are not operating in sexual authenticity or integrity. You are actually staunch monogamous, but you are afraid to go back into that energy because what if it happens again, right? So... If we want to experience happiness, if you, if any of that rang true, we need to start looking at the pain here so we can get through that so you can actually be happy in your life. And some of you aren't going to know. Some of you, even working through all of this, you might have questions about whether you are a monogamist or something else. And what I would tell you is, you don't have to be like completely celibate or whatever while you're figuring that out. As long as you clean up these boundaries with these more casual partners, especially if you have significant assets, you can continue on with that sort of a healthy, responsible lifestyle, either in perpetuity if you don't find someone else or until you find the one for you, whether that's just something that you would like to be with someone without any type of legal whatever, or maybe you know that person is important enough and you feel okay enough to get into a legal contract with them maritally. The thing that you might not want to hear about these boundaries, especially if you are wealthy and dealing with people casually, you need to consult an attorney to get contracts written up for these partners of yours. Because what I get is some of y'all are sort of, you're not being dishonest with people, but it's almost just sort of like, well, I never made them any promises, right? I never said I was here to be anybody's partner. I just said, hey, you wanna have fun, let's go out, whatever. And then you kind of went on your little merry way, maybe for a long period of time, I don't know. And then this person like gets attached to you, but you can just leave the situation. You feel scot-free because you know, well, I never promised her the moon, right? If you're in that energy, that is like shitty, like clean that up. Some of you though are in situations where you are being very honest with people about where you are and the lifestyle that you're leading. You don't have any contracts in place. And what's going on here, if you're in that energy, is unfortunately, the it's women that you're dealing with. The women that you're dealing with, when you tell them that, what they get into their heads is, oh, but not me. I'm the special one. I'm the one that's going to change him. And then it's just like, that's on them. If you're in that 
type of energy. What's going on here is this is why you need the contract. This is why, especially if these people are getting a taste of a lifestyle that they are not used to. And that is something you should consider if you are going to people who are not within your tax bracket or close to, because it's almost unfair in a way. It's like you're sort of giving this person a taste of something that they're not going to have again. And then you're just kind of dropping them off, which is why the contracts are necessary because like that can get really super messy, especially if you have actual kids and stuff like that. You just don't like you don't I don't get the sense that anything has blown up in that way. I don't know that it will. It's just like y'all need protection. If you have significant assets and you are not protecting yourself at this point, like what's going on here? <laughs> what's going on here? Like that needs to happen for you, okay? And I know you wanna feel like I'm not like, uh, I don't wanna be crappy. I don't wanna like lead with my money maybe. I don't know. I don't want the money to change me or okay. Money changes people, okay? When they find out about what you have, unfortunately it turns a bunch of people into a bunch of conniving assholes and you need to be legally protected. And that's the last thing I'm gonna say about it. Oh, if you do not clean this stuff up, the type of consequences that you are going to get are significant health consequences. It's because of the stress. It's because of these people depleting you. Even if you do not necessarily feel this, a lot of you, depending on what went on in your childhoods, if this specific person from the beginning of the video is still here, this is also for you. This might be for other people. If you experienced any type of abuse in your childhood, what is going on right now is you do not actually register the honest amount of pain you're in because of what went down in your childhood and what you, what your threshold became. As a kid, your threshold for pain and stress is extremely high. And I mean that like, not that your body won't break down because of it, but that you don't detect it until it's at like a wildly, like something that would have killed another person a long time ago. And while this can be a strength of yours, because that was probably very useful in the business world under pressure, it is also an Achilles heel, as is the size of a lot of y'all's hearts and what you think about women in particular, but how you want to operate as a humanitarian in general. You are very generous people. That generosity is being taken advantage of at the moment. I'm sorry to break it to you, but not everybody is good. I don't care, like we all wanna be optimists about this. It's simply not true. And a lot of you need to start seeing the people around you for who they really are. You are cruising for heart attacks, high blood pressure, strokes, open heart surgery. I mean it. And that's, if you don't start changing this, this is within the next five to six years. Some of you sooner. This is the broadest collective, all right? Then we have people who are married and this one's gonna be a little bit more challenging. I actually don't have anything different to say here except you need to start considering divorce because your partner's a piece of shit. I don't care what you want to work on. You seem like a person of integrity. You wanna keep things together for the family. You wanna work on things. This person doesn't wanna work on things with you. They wanna exploit you. You have been unhappy for a long time. Really consider what that's doing to the family in general, because I guarantee you, whatever you think, I know it's the mother of your children and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm coming for these people. This person isn't really a do nothing bitch, but essentially like whatever y'all have, it's on you. I guarantee you, not only do you have the finance, but your caring outweighs whatever this person is doing. This person is selfish. And I know divorce is likely the last thing you wanna do. You seem like people, if you are married or you were, that you only ever wanted to be married once. Believe me, I relate. But we can't control other people and you need to think about your own health, your own happiness, how you're gonna be this provider because if you stay in this, the provider's getting taken out and then what's gonna go on with your actual dependents, your actual kids, what are they gonna do then? Is this person going to be able to handle that? I don't know, that's for you to determine, but 
if you have been deeply unhappy for a very long time in your marriage and nothing has worked out despite all of the work you've been doing, the time is now to be considering permanent choices for your own health and the health of your actual dependents. <gasps> no! <laughs> We're going to draw the cards to see if they back me up, if they have any of, uh, they're saying this one, any other messages for you, maybe some light here at the end of these tunnels because, oh my gosh, like some of y'all are going through it, man. And you're good people, like I feel it. You're good people, you deserve whatever visions and dreams that you have for yourself. You deserve better partners. Even if those are going to be multiple partners throughout your life, you just deserve better quality. Like you do not have the quality right now that is fitting for you. Oh, and by the way, this energy was lingering from another reading that I did for a feminine collective that is currently like kind of between two worlds, like nothing really bad's going on with them. They're actually peachy keen. They're not in the thick of it like y'all are. They just have a few little things to take care of emotionally from their past, but if you encountered them now, it wouldn't be anything like big and dramatic. It's like normal stuff going on with probably any person who has been through a healing process that you would date but there's probably a little bit more time you could give these people. And I'm saying give these people because the energy collective that I am addressing now specifically is part of the collective that is in these feminines future. But what I'm telling you is that for a percentage of you, you actually already have seen some of these people and you have them in mind and you think you could be happier with them. And I'm here to tell you that you're correct. But um, you need to sort out whatever's going on in your life because you can't be bringing you can't be bringing this into this person's life, even if you just think that you would have like like a short term. I'm talking about maybe like two to three years monogamy with this person if that's how you would be approaching them. You would you still have a better option here is what I'm telling you. There is better energy already available for you. But you've got to clean up the energy that you're in. All right, I have no idea what's going to come out in these cards at this point. I'm just hoping it's like good news, man. God, maybe some advice. What do they need to know? Four cards. Four? Five. I won't lie to you, though. I'm going to feel so happy when this reading is done because I'm not going to lie to you. This isn't the best energy, y'all. This is not the best. And you don't have to stay here is like the most important takeaway. Well, I'm already liking how this ending is looking here. Yes, essentially I am being backed up about how you should be proceeding going forward. When you're offering, like this is casual sexual attention, maybe, casual passion to someone, you've got a little spark with somebody, you need to hold on to your money. Be a little bit more guarded with it, all right? We're not given. Why are y'all treating people like wives who aren't wives? Okay, it's inappropriate energy to be in. You can be emotionally giving with these people. You can most certainly be considerate of your partners, be generous in that way, but you need to really be careful about the material aspects of this because once you start doing that, in fact, you are going to be getting more into this I am fully fulfilled energy. It's going to create a lot of success in your life, either with these other sexual options of yours. We're going to dig in a little bit to this because some of these aren't just sexual partners. These are people that you are going to be collaborating with possibly in some way. I don't know how, but for some of you, it's just like, look, this is threesome energy for some of y'all, but I'm just saying it can be better already. Right? It can be healthier than what um, than what we're experiencing here. So what are we looking at? We're looking at this page of wands. We don't need to look at... No, we do. Apparently, we need to clarify... Oh, okay. Everybody's going to get one additional card because we start general and then we're going to get more specific. So as I clarify, some of you may not feel resonance with what I'm bringing through and that's fine because we tend to get 
into a more specific collective as we get deeper into the cards. Yeah, okay, so you're going to be, you're going to need to be way more discriminating with who you're offering these casual attentions to, even if it's people who you think could grow into a full-blown relationship. I'm not getting that this casual offer is anything like y'all being crappy. I'm getting that this is very appropriate, like how you're approaching people in general it's appropriate starter energy. And I get that either people sense like your power, right? <laughs> like sometimes it happens. When you have a lot of assets, it creates this energetic thing that people might not be able to articulate, but they sense. There's a gravitational pull around people who have more material under their command. So even if you aren't leading it, the sharky people or people who are canny will still pick up on it. And these casual investments that you are trying to give to people turn into something overwhelming, like they're demanding too much for you. So if you notice that very soon after you make a casual offer, you need to come up out of that because that's, that's not the vibe, okay? Looking for flow here. And so if people sense that you have more that you're not letting onto, they're going to, you know, they're going to start like trying to demand more of your time and energy and attention. And I get that y'all have a lot of things going on in your life. You are going to need to look for partners who are really okay, like seriously solid with the type of lifestyle that you are looking to live. And I'm not saying you're sidelining their lifestyles, but when you've got all of this going on, like people just need to be real about it. Yeah, um, you need to withhold your material and yeah, you need to withhold just the amounts in general. Cause I get maybe now you are leading into an offering too much. Like you're assuming too much about these people and the quality of their integrity than I think they deserve. So going forward, hide your power level. And some of y'all who are maybe open to the one eventually, there she is. I told y'all, I'm going to link that reading below if you are in that energy or this is especially if you already have a person in mind, a big message that I've been getting for people, um, women and men and everyone in between who have been burned in the past, who are interested in someone who they have like some little concerns about, this person is actually the real deal. So if you know you are someone who would like something long-term, even something like a marriage in the future, or maybe something like it, if it's not a marriage, that partner is available to you. And in fact, they are either absolutely ready right now, or they just have a little bit more to work through. You, if you have stuff to clean up around your life, as you are cleaning up that stuff, this person is going to sort through whatever they need to sort through and y'all are going to come together at just the right time. And what is this success? It's just an end to this. You're moving from I'm sad about all of these shitty partners and like all this stuff casually that didn't work out or if you're on kink scenes or whatever that have burned you. Like you're moving out of that and then there's the two of cups right behind you. That two of cups is this. All right, like it's there. So you are going to be moving from that grief into happiness with your partner choices, whether it is one person or it is in fact many. Yeah, um, whatever, I'm gonna look more in depth at this Three of Pentacles, but whatever this Three of Pentacles is, whether this is in fact multiple partners that you are dealing with healthfully and you know boundaries intact and all that, that is gonna put you in really great energy, or whether this is some sort of collaboration with this um, solitary option that you want, it, you're gonna be having the time of your life in the future. I'm telling you, once you put these boundaries in place and clean all of this up, you are going to be so much happier than you currently are. So if you are worried that if you start making these moves, that it's in fact going to cause you more grief, please, you are wrong. You are going to be much happier and much healthier. So what do we need to look at? We need to look at this 
Seven of Wands, we do not need to look at this. We do need to look at this Queen of Cups. For those of you who have a singular particular person in mind, I will give you some more information on that. Um, they want me to look at this Five of Cups because potentially you might be bringing some stuff into this victory that you don't need to, I don't know. And then we're looking at this Three of Pentacles to get more information on this collaboration. They want this deck. Y'all need to make moves. I'm stressed out, okay? You need to make moves because you're stressing me out. I don't care about any of y'all's happiness. I care about mine. And right now, you're harshing my vibe, okay? Collective of provider men who are, like, actually really great and wonderful. I need you to do that for me. <laughs> because I don't need this energy in my future. I don't want to be reading for y'all again when y'all have happiness right in front of you. All right, what's up with the Seven of Wands? The Seven of Wands is clarified by the Seven of Wands. I know! I know! We've got to protect ourselves! Ah! But what about it, though? Can we have more information besides the Seven of Wands? Or else why did you ask me to... It might just be like, that's confirmation, right? You gotta knock these people out, okay? You gotta protect yourself and your monies. For your kids, for your kids' future, like, oh my gosh. Because I know y'all's kids is thriving is important to you, not these randoms. Yeah, move away from it. Whatever you were doing in the past that was causing this, your contribution to the situation, this overgiving, this denial of the privilege thing. Because I bet some of y'all are like, I'm blue collar, but you're living in brownstones and shit. Like, come on now. Stop it. Stop. Get help. You need to step into your <laughs> You're operating at a different level now. And I know that can be hard, especially if y'all move from poverty to wealth. Like, it is hard to let some of that stuff go. Like, a lot of that. Like, past stuff can really become part of our identity. And it's like, we don't want to become the villain or we just don't want to let go of that part of ourselves. But y'all are out here like playing small when you could be playing so much bigger and accruing more wealth in line with the vision that you want for yourself and to make this world a better place, I swear. Yeah, you just need to move away. Like, you can't be sloppy about this anymore, y'all. I'm sorry, I know you want to be spontaneous and fun and free, but you can't be in this energy. More money, more problems, okay? And that's one of them. You can't just be running around doing everything with everyone and expect there not to be consequences. Clean it up. Especially if you intend to stay ethically non-monogamous or poly or in your kink scenes or whatever. If you know that you are authentically not a monogamous, you need to clean that up. Mm. Okay, this Queen of Cups. Let me get a few more on this because I'm... We got similar energies going on here. Oh my gosh, actually, I do want to show you this. So y'all are moving into victory off of this energy, this crying over these three cups right here. Just want to show you for those of you who know you're monogamous and in fact maybe have a person in mind already, this person, this woman, whoever she is, she is looking at her own set of three cups. And she's not in this grief energy, but she's disenchanted. And that makes sense with the collective reading that I did because these people are not like bitter or broken hearted. They're not like love is dead. Like it's not that, right? It's just that they know who they are. They've seen what's gone on in the past that was in fact beneath them and created problems. But also what's going on with them right now is that the options that they do have, while these aren't terrible people, are just not for them. They are in fact waiting, waiting, because they likely don't know you. Even if you've spotted them, I get they don't know who you are. They are waiting. They're not selling out, essentially. They would rather be by themselves than take an option that they know isn't exactly what they want. So they're not going to take that cup until it's coming from the king. Anything else about this collective of, um, of women, of better options? Yep. 
They're waiting on the emperor. And I get that's y'all. I get that's y'all. And this isn't in any covetous way either. The Queen of Cups is not like that. This is a very generous, open-hearted person in their own right, no matter what tax bracket they are currently in. Yeah, they're just, they're manifesting in general. They are in good energy. It's just a little bit of frustration is what I got from them, to be honest. A little bit of frustration, and there's like a little twinge about whatever went on in their past situations. And some of these were also marriages that created a lot of pain that they had to heal from. They are a lot further along with that than y'all are, I would have to say, because they don't have anything going on in their materiality that is currently affecting them. Like they're in a good vibe. It's y'all It's y'all that have the commotion going on. So let me look at y'all in this five of cups. Yeah, it looks like um, you're just uncertain. Eh, yeah, you don't wanna, I'm scared. I, what if? What if I go towards this? What if I make this offer and it's more of the same? It's not, it's not. We're gonna look at your best advice, but the best advice honestly is take it slow, give it time. No one can hide who they are from you. In fact, most people will tell you who they are within the first few hours of engagement with them but sometimes not so. The best advice anyway is to take it slow and watch this person. I promise you, like, these energies are not in any rush. These aren't people who are, like, likely these people, if you have an eye on a particular person already, they probably are not people who have casual relationships. Just throwing it out there. So if you are approaching, like if you have a person in mind and you are approaching them with maybe some type of alternate sort of stuff, I don't know. I don't know how they would feel if you, you said that to them. It would depend. Yeah, like you're just, you're just trying to see the truth of this situation. You're being overly cautious, which is fine. But what I would say is like, despite all of your concerns, you're headed into success. It's not going to be a repeat because especially if you're listening to me, now you know. Or what you have always known in general has been confirmed for you. Because I guarantee you, most of you have probably already been thinking of this. Though I always get like, speculative when I get readings for men, if like men actually are gonna end up watching these readings. Whatever this collaboration is, and I'm getting this is more for, like this isn't, I'm not gonna talk about threesome energy right now, like y'all are done. This is more for people who are looking to collaborate with like this other person or are headed into at least more monogamish-ish situations. This is going to be a very healing, restorative experience for you. Whatever it is, even if it's something you're excited and passionate about, this partnership or partnerships are going to bring you a lot of peace. Like you are going to be able to sleep well at night due to whatever interactions you are having. You're going to be able to recover a lot in dealing with these new people or this new person. You're just, um, now y'all, I'm going to tell you this. This isn't for all of you, but it is for some of you. We are talking about an older collective of men. If some of you have been experiencing any performance issues, that is not going to be a problem in whatever relationship or relationships you're going through in the future. In fact, if you are experiencing that now, a lot of that is gonna be stress related. When you remove yourself from that stress, you might, if you are taking medication or anything right now, test the waters, you might actually be able to come off of those medications because you're not gonna be dealing with a bunch of fuck shit, okay? So you are going to recover so much of this like, 
mature passion back. Like you are going to, if you've lost any hope for visions that you have about yourself and your, your future and your family, whatever partnership or partnerships you're going to be moving into, that is going to restore whatever you've lost through what you've been going through. Like you are going to feel like the king again. If you are currently not feeling in your emperor energy, that is going to be restored to you because you can be on top of the world and having everything that an emperor would have materially, but depending on what's going on with you, you might not be feeling that in your energy and we don't want that for y'all. We know y'all are the kings out here, okay? So please be picking people who are making you feel on the inside the same way that your material life looks on the outside. Y'all are just going to be experiencing like a lot of passion. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. I just see. I see a lot of fun times. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm seeing. I'm seeing a lot of going on. I want to spy so bad on that, but I'm not. I'm not. Well, actually, no, I am going to look because that also might be passionate communication as well. And I just want to take a look. But it's also, you know, what I'm implying. What is this? Why is this coming back? Stop. Stop. I get that this is creeping up on you. Like when you start experiencing this happiness, like this is going to creep back up on you. This what if? What if it's too good to be true? You're saying, yeah, stop, y'all. It's not. Like, you're going to get so happy, and then you're just going to get in your head about this. And it's upsetting me because I see the big picture here. But you know what? What I'll tell you is your best bet with that is to just be honest with whoever you're with, especially if it's one person and you are working up in a way that you trust them. Because I promise you, whoever that you're looking at is not going to shut down your emotions. This person is the Queen of Cups. They are going to care about you and what you're thinking and feeling as an individual outside of whatever like fun times maybe that you're having with them, okay? So if you start feeling triggered or whatever, start speaking up, okay? Don't like, cause I get that some of y'all like withdraw. Like you just withdraw completely. That's not what you want to do here. Yeah, this person is going to listen to you. This person's a good listener. They are very fair. They are very honest. And it, like, it's just this forthright, like, so, like, some, like this isn't bad Queen of Wands energy. This person, while, like, this is a really good combination. While this person is the Queen of Cups, they are also the Queen of Swords, which means that despite whatever emotions that they're having for you individually, they will be able to detach from that to hear you as the full complex person that you are. And they will be able to listen to that and maybe just listen to it if that's all you want, or in fact, give you a different measured perspective on what's going on with you. Like this person, this person isn't going to cut and run from whatever residual stuff that you're still going through. So if you have like abandonment stuff going on and you feel like if you expose this thing about yourself, that this person is going to think you are less of a man, you are absolutely wrong. This person is not going to ditch you because you're all of a sudden not providing them with a good time. I get that's what some of y'all are dealing with. You're so used to people who like, you're the good time provider. And when you actually have a problem, there's no one around you. Cause all of a sudden you're not the good time. And so these people just get annoyed or they get needy or it's me, 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 me. And that is not the vibe, okay? So this other person and or persons, they're not going to do that to you. You are not the piggy bank. You are not the, oh, we just go on endless parties and vacations and mm -hmm, that's it. Yeah, this person, whoever this is, they would be willing to work with you consistently on stuff if that is what you want, of course, okay? So, I'm not saying don't feel the way you feel, but if you have concerns about that in picking someone or choosing someone, 
you are going to be able to feel however you want and it's not going to be a problem expressing that in the moment okay so i just i'm just nosy because um i want to know if this um eight of wands is anything besides a lot of good times because y'all will have that it'll be predominantly that probably i just get the sense that when the emotions come up just let it like I said, this person's been through their healing process. So they have the room within them to deal with your stuff. They have room for you, is what I'm saying. The real you. Not some little money facade or whatever. What is this Eight of Wands? I think whatever communication that you're going to have. Or these... Uh, Actually, I feel like this is more a message about these fun times. Um, it's going to be these fun times, equal amounts, very, very spicy, but also very deeply intimate as well. Does this mean anything else or is this really just about zesty times? I'm just getting that this other person really values themselves. And that's the truth. There's just going to be very, very clear communication here. If this is some type of communication or other than um, zesty things that are going on, there's just going to be nothing but clear communication here in the bedroom and outside of it because this person isn't deeply insecure. Like they know their worth. Even if they're not where you are materially, energetically, they're in the same place as you. So... What is the best advice for this collective going forward that maybe I have not given yet, or perhaps we will get confirmations of what I have already said in the cards? Because I think I give good advice independently of the guides and spirit. They're telling me not to get uppity, though. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I love this and it's advice for those of you who are going to be non-monogamous as well as monogamous. Whatever offers you have your eye on making right now, maybe as you're cleaning this up, you have someone in mind or while you're cleaning this up, you have someone in mind or multiple people in mind. If you are moving into non-monogamy, the people who you already have in mind or who you will be choosing in the future, they are very mature, balanced people who if you are looking to experience, you know, that more non-monogamous or multiple partner type of kinky lifestyle, they will be of the caliber that you can have that with and be very, very happy. If you are headed into more monogamy, and what I'm seeing here is you can see this little, like that little power imbalance, right? This cup that you're offering, it's coming to someone who is like you're taller than this person. You might actually be taller than this person. I don't know. But to me, what that means is that um, it's hierarchy of scale, right? The person who you are looking to make this offer to might not have as much as you do, might not have the social standing that you do, but this is a very innocent, pure thing that is going on here. Like there isn't any garbage energy in this. So if you are maybe having concerns about approaching someone like that, like, is it creepy for me to do this? Like if there's an age dynamic, if there's a money dynamic, if there's a social dynamic that is going on here, um, I would say, you know, I think it speaks to your character that you're having these concerns already. Um, so kudos to you. But I don't think that this is going to be a problem as long as you are both being honest about it up front. And I just don't, I think it's going to be fine. I think there will probably be like, like this person is kind of like open to this, but they're like surprised by it. So I would say, um... You might get some questions depending on the type of offer that you're making. So be open to that, especially if this is someone 
who is not um, from the same realm as you, no matter what that realm is. But this person is an excellent mix of confidence and compassion. Like I said, of, you know, that zesty energy and that, um, and that deep intimacy. This is a very, very nice combination. And this person already presented as the Queen of Swords and the Queen of Pentacles as well, I might add. The only people that we don't have on the board, we said she is waiting for her emperor. That is what she knows she is worth. In her energy are all four queens. We just don't have the, em like, let me just, looking at the bottom of these decks for any hidden... <laughs> No, it's not under there. I was like, let me find the hidden empress, all right? Split. No. Okay, I'm trying too hard. But all four queens are present. So what I would tell you is going forward, clean things up before you really do anything. Because what I would say about this queen of cups energy, especially this person who is denying certain things right now, I'm telling you, they will not, whatever they are envisioning they are not going to settle for less they want this and so if they feel chaos in your energy and they will be able to pick that up and they will have no problem telling you something about it if they sense that still in your energy it's going to be a no from them dog because like i promise you with this person or these people it does not matter what material stuff that you have. If they sense vibe wrecking things, if they sense something that's going to throw off their equilibrium, it does not matter the material perks that go along with whatever relationship you are offering. They will shut you down. And that's the exact type of person you want, I promise you. So I'm really sorry, guys, that you are going through this right now, no matter what level of this you are at. You know, um, even the most light stuff with the non-monogamy that just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. This is very stressful. A lot of you where this is about the divorces and the marriages, that's exceptionally painful, even if you will be making choices that ultimately will make you happier. You know, um, especially when you have kids and everything else, that is a lot to be thinking about. So I would say I'm not getting anything that needs to be rushed here. Take your time because whoever these options are or whoever this one person is, they're not just going to take any old thing. And there are not many people like y'all in the world. You're exceptional. Don't forget that. And if you have anyone in your life who's trying to tell you something different or take credit for your success or whatever it is, think them right out of your existence. 